Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 13th of November. Indian Prime Minister Modi, US President Trump hold talks on sidelines of ASEAN summit. Toxic air continues to engulf Indian capital New Delhi for second week. Former Nepali Premier Oli says Alliance wants to take development process as campaign. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with other world leaders attended the opening ceremony of ASEAN summit on Monday. He also held talks with US President Donald Trump on the sidelines of the event to boost bilateral ties. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with other leaders of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN attended the opening ceremony of a regional summit on Monday. The annual meeting has brought together world leaders including US President Donald Trump. Prime Minister Modi later visited International Rice Research Institute in Los Banos in the province of Laguna where he inaugurated a rice field laboratory under his name. He also held bilateral talks with U.S. President Donald Trump on the sidelines of the ASEAN summit. It was the fourth meeting between the two leaders this year. Indian Prime Minister Modi also attended the ASEAN Business and Investment Summit in Manila. Addressing the event, he said his government wants to make India a manufacturing hub. Exhorting the businessmen to invest in India, the Prime Minister said that most sectors of the Indian economy are open for foreign investment. Prime Minister Modi is scheduled to address the ASEAN India and East Asia Summit on Tuesday. Chief of the General Political Department of Vietnam People's Army, Lieutenant General Leong Kyong, on Monday inspected the Tri Services Guard of Honor in Indian capital, New Delhi. Later, the Vietnamese leader held talks with the Indian Defense Secretary Sanjay Mishra in a bid to strengthen bilateral cooperation between India and Vietnam. Both the countries have stepped up cooperation in security ties in recent years and are also modernizing their militaries. Moving on, Indian capital New Delhi's air quality remained poor for second week on Monday with poor visibility in the morning. A thick cloud of toxic smog, 10 times the recommended limit, has enveloped the city as authorities struggle to tackle a public health crisis. India's capital New Delhi continued to reel under heavy smog on Monday as a thick haze reduced visibility and air quality remained at toxic levels. According to U.S. Embassy measure, levels of poisonous airborne particles known as PM2.5 had reached 495 on Monday morning, compared with the upper limit of good quality air at 50. The air quality for the last six days has remained in the severe zone across the national capital region, prompting the Indian Medical Association to declare a health emergency. बाहर निकलने में सांस की प्रॉब्लम हो रही है आंखों में दिक्कत आ रही है देन उसके बाद हम बस वगैरह सारे वो भी धीरे चल रहे हैं हमें लेट भी हो रहा है इतना टाइम लग रहा है बस बस वाले भी धीरे-धीरे चला रहे हैं मोस्ट प्राइवेट एंड पब्लिक स्कूल्स रीओपन ऑन मंडे आफ्टर अ 4 डे ब्रेक अनाउंस्ड बाय न्यू दिल्लीस एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दिल्लीस गवर्नमेंट हैड डिक्लेयर्ड अ पब्लिक हेल्थ इमरजेंसी लास्ट वीक आफ्टर पोल्यूशन लेवल्स इन द सिटी स्पाइक्ड Meanwhile, India's weather office has forecasted rain over the next three days, which could help clear the smog. Meanwhile, Baloch activists held demonstrations and awareness campaigns in Germany recently against human rights violations by the Pakistan establishment in Balochistan. They alleged that enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings are used against Baloch people to suppress their voices.
Anti-Pakistan protests were recently held in two different cities of Germany against the abduction of Baloch activists by Pakistani security forces. The Baloch National Movement or BNM held a protest in Hanover City against Pakistani atrocities and abduction of women, children and students in southwestern Balochistan province. Meanwhile, the Baloch Human Rights Organization or BHRO held a two-day awareness campaign in Germany's Berlin city against human rights violations in Balochistan. Activists demanded safe release of Nawaz Atta, information secretary of the BHRO, and eight other students who they alleged were abducted by Pakistani intelligence agencies from Pakistan's Karachi city. The state policy of using excessive force against civilians and whosoever talk about Baloch rights has intensified in recent days and has become the major cause of serious human rights violations in Balochistan. Meanwhile, BHRO activist Taiba Baloch announced a protest will be held in Balochistan's Kweta city on November 15 to demand safe recovery of Nawaz Atta and other students. Baloch activists have for long voiced their concerns over systematic economic, social and political exclusion of indigenous Baloch people. They allege Pakistani forces use enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings as means to repress their peaceful struggle for rights and equality. In news from Afghanistan, British troops stationed in Afghanistan on Sunday marked a Remembrance Day to honor those who died fighting for their country. At the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month, two-minute silence is observed on the day called Armistice Day, the day which marks the end of the First World War. British troops stationed in Afghanistan marked traditional Remembrance Day on Sunday to honour those who died fighting for their country. NATO soldiers from Australia, New Zealand and other coalition countries joined the British troops at the ceremony. At the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month, two-minute silence is observed on the day called Armistice Day. The day marks the end of the First World War. Uh, it's a focus point, if you like, that allows us to reflect on the young men and young women who've given their lives in the service of their country uh, and we in most in recent years and we don't also forget those that have gone before us as well um, being on operations also i think shows up as you might have seen earlier uh, that we are part of a coalition you will have seen many nations who elected to join us this morning so the armistice day today has grown in scope and commemorates all those who have died in the war a number of other countries, including those in the Commonwealth, U.S. and Poland, also mark Armistice Day. Students in Afghanistan participated in a concert to raise funds for an orphanage in capital Kabul recently. The visitors were left enthralled and had a gala time with a variety of performances. Students from the National Institute of Music and Afghan Child Education and Care Organization or AFCECO recently performed a concert to attract financial help for an orphanage in Kabul. The dance and music concert involved a variety of performances by the children. The event also observed a performance by the first female sitar player of the country which remained the highlight of the concert. The artist during the event also shared her journey with the Maihan orphanage. پرورشگاه یفسیکو برایم فرصت های بسیاری داد که دختران افغان به آنها دسترسی ندارند. تجربه من در این کار قصه های بسیاری دارد برای گفتن. بهتر است که در باره آن کتابی نوشته شود. Maihan orphanage in Kabul was once able to shelter around 700 vulnerable children, but according to its officials, the increasing financial problems have reduced the huge number. The orphanage is now hopeful to raise funds for the needy through such events. Moving on to news from Nepal, former Nepalese Prime Minister and Chairman of CPN UML KP Sharma Oli on Monday said the leftist alliance with CPN Maoist Centre was formed to take the development process in the country as a campaign. Addressing an election campaign at Gauradaha municipality, Oli said a new campaign was necessary to uplift the country from the circle of poverty. He also took a jibe at Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deobar's Nepali Congress for failing to prosper the country. Oli said there was a strong need for voters' education due to the alliance between the parties. 
Fishing net industry in India's southern Tamil Nadu province is at loss. The traders of the industry in Rameshwaram town held Sri Lankan Navy responsible for its due to the frequent arrest of the Indian fishermen. The fishing net business in India's southern Tamil Nadu province is at loss and traders blame Sri Lanka for the downfall. Net makers in Rameshwaram town said that Indian fishermen are scared of the frequent arrest by the Lankan Navy leading low sales. Several Indian fishermen in recent times have been arrested by Lankan Navy on charges of fishing in its territorial waters. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Over 40 Indian fishermen are reportedly still in Sri Lankan prisons. Fishermen from both sides often breach the undemarcated maritime boundaries, leading to their arrest and detention. Hundreds of people took part in the 10th annual LGBT parade in India's capital, New Delhi, to show their support towards the community. Hundreds of people participated in the 10th annual LGBT parade in Indian capital New Delhi on Sunday. LGBT activists and their supporters enthusiastically took part in the parade wearing vibrior colored outfits and wigs extending their support towards the community. They also waved rainbow flags and held play cards and banners in support of LGBT rights. A cultural event was also held as part of the parade where LGBT community members showcased their talent. And it feels really very good when you feel and when you see the people like you around. And I never thought that I'm going to get so treasure of people around me. And after all, we are here to celebrate the existence of each and individual of this society. Many LGBT people have often hidden their identity due to discrimination and bullying. However, after India's APEC score declaration on August 25th this year that sexual orientation is an essential attribute of privacy, the move has given hope to LGBT community of being accepted in society. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.